What is going on everybody? Today I'm going to answer a question that absolutely nobody is asking. Is the cheapest GPS unit used by the men's Pro Peloton any good? Let's find out. The unit in question is of course the Brighton Rider 420 and just to qualify it is used by Israel Startup Nation. The price is 219 Australian dollars for the head unit and 319 dollars for the bundle that includes a heart rate monitor and cadence sensor. Let's start with the hardware first and foremost. The Rider 420 is rocking a 2.3 inch display, 35 hours of claimed battery life, a frankly ridiculous number of tracking protocols, GPS, GLONASS, BDS, Galileo and QZSS. So presumably no matter where you are in the world this thing will also know where you are in the world. On the back of the unit we have a sort of chopped version of the Garmin quarter turn interface. I'm guessing that's to just get around certain patents. And that means that these will fit into Garmin mounts although not quite perfectly but interestingly, Garmin's won't fit into Brighton mounts because I think the tabs on the Garmin seem a little bit too thick. So yeah, I guess there's Garmin mount compatibility, but I think you'd need to test it on a case by case basis. I think the hardware is actually quite good looking. It's a fairly sleek looking unit with a perfectly flat face on it. There are some concessions that have been made though, and that is in the button layout. The bottom two corners have buttons on them and they've decided to put two buttons on the back, which is, as you can imagine, not ideal because you cannot see the buttons and what they're labeled, so you have to rely on memory to know what it is that they do when you press them. It's not a huge deal, you do get used to it, but it's still annoying. Now setup is where things start to get quite interesting because Brighton has bought smartphone setup to such a low price and I'm so excited because smartphone setup is better. The Brighton Active app can control most things on the unit. It manages your profile, syncs your data, does all of your display and screen setup, has a route creator, allows a level of analysis of activities, and plenty more. Generally, it's quite a simple interface to wrap your head around and it won't take you too long to figure everything out. What I do like is that you get a display of the screen as you're setting up your data pages, so you know what it's gonna look like by the time it comes to sync with the head unit itself. There are some annoyances with setup though. The first, and this is something that is reminiscent of the giant Neos track, which was also a reskin Brighton. One of the major annoyances when setting up your data fields is that it doesn't retain fields you've already set if you change the quantity of data fields. So say you have a page with seven fields and you are happy with them. You just want to add an eighth. You go up to eight fields and all the fields you've already set will be gone. They will be cleared out. So you have to start from scratch and set up all of your fields again with that added eight. Then it gets interesting because if you drop back to seven, it will retain those fields that you'd already set. It kind of saves the data fields to the data field quantity that you've already done, which makes no sense and makes setup annoying. I don't really get why that's been done. It has been done and you just got to deal with it. The second annoyance I have is that there are only two bike profile options in the device and the data pages are not saved to those bikes. The data pages are global no matter what bike you're on. That is annoying for me because I have a few different bikes with different sensors, different riding applications, and I don't want global data fields. So it's annoying because if I go from a road bike with a power meter to a gravel bike with just a heart rate monitor, I'm either having to change fields or just deal with dead fields that have no purpose. A third annoyance is that the proportions are kind of weird and you don't get a choice to change them. I don't like that. I would rather have everything even or at least have the option to choose one dominant and then a few other even ones. So let's move on to navigation and the Rider 420 has its strong points and its weak points. The basic system is just a breadcrumb navigator. So once you've loaded a route in, you get a line and you have to follow that. There's not really any broader context. You don't get roads, you don't get anything else. It's sort of fine, but once you've spent a few years with maps, you get used to it and you come to quite rely on it. 
I've been riding a lot of gravel, I've been doing a lot of adventure stuff recently, and the Rider 420 was a bit inconvenient because you do need maps in those situations, especially if you're riding through a trail network or you're in a really unfamiliar place. And although this is a value unit, you don't have to spend that much more to get the mapping options. The Lazine Mega XL and Mega C have the option to add maps into the head unit through their website. And that's about $300 for the head unit, only about $80 more. Now, one thing that Brighton has done really well is brought in all of the integrations that are starting to appear in much more expensive units from Wahoo and Garmin. So you can connect with Strava, Komoot, ride with GPS and have all of the routes you've created in there available through the app that can then be synced with the device and you're away. It's a really nice system, I like it, it's well implemented, and it's really good to see on such a unit that costs as little. There is also a route creator in the app, but it's pretty slow, there's a big lag time between each waypoint that you add, so don't use it if you're in a hurry. And my advice would be to stick with those other creators, Strava, Komoot, Ride with GPS, to get things done quickly. There is also a workout builder which currently isn't functional at time of review, you can build it in the app put together sort of time and effort based workouts and then theoretically in future you'll be able to transfer them to the head unit. And that's pretty cool to see in a unit that's only $220 although it's not currently working. Fingers crossed it's working at some point soon. So let's talk about what it is like to actually ride with the Rider 420 and it's quite a nice unit. The screen is really easy to read, which I appreciate. It's got nice contrast and it's far more readable than I would normally expect for a unit of this size. It's not really that big. The sounds are fairly subtle and unobtrusive too, with a little chirp rather than the Garmin that just chooses to shout at you whenever it wants to tell you anything, really. And I was quite impressed with how quickly the unit finds satellites. I guess it has all of those satellite protocols in there so yeah it's ready to go in seconds after you've turned it on it's pretty great the battery life is pretty damn huge they say 35 hours and i have no reason to disagree with that i don't run formal battery tests because i can't be bothered it would just take too long and i don't know what settings they use to get to that number anyway so yeah it seems really long 35 hours. One improvement that Brighton has made over previous units is you can access menus while you ride. That drove me crazy with the giant Neos track. If you'd started a ride and you needed to connect a sensor or you wanted to load a course in, you had to end your activity and start from scratch and that sucked. It doesn't do that anymore. That's progress. Once the ride is done, there is an auto upload feature. You just need to tether the unit to your phone and it will sync everything via Bluetooth. I did have a very patchy sort of experience with the Bluetooth. I found I had to turn my phone off then on again to get it to connect, but that's not really a problem that I think is unique to Brighton. I've also been testing a Wahoo recently where I had to do the same thing. Now a quick note on sensors, the cadence sensor, it's fine, works totally fine, and it's cheaper than the alternatives from the other big brands. So yeah, it's not bad. The heart rate monitor punches above its price point as well. It's quite comfortable. It seems to read accurately. And the only thing I'd really criticize it for is that the actual unit is a little bit chunkier than something from Garmin or Wahoo. So it sort of sticks through your jersey a little more. So now we need to talk about the market positioning of this unit because it's sort of walking a very strange line. $220 is cheap. That's not much money for a bike GPS. And it also packs a ton of features into that price point. The problem I have is that the features aren't quite as well implemented as I would like as a sort of power user. Someone who has fairly high expectations for their GPS units and is willing to pay to get that. So for example, having so few bike profiles and having data pages not tied to those bike profiles is kind of a pain in the ass for me. Also the lack of maps is a problem. So in a strange way, what you end up with the Rider 420 is a unit that has too many features for your really sort of casual, not that demanding user, but not quite enough for the power nerd user like me. It does a lot right and it does a lot very well, but it's just not quite there in a few areas that I would like it to be stronger in. But again, it's $220. I'm a big believer in scaling criticism to the cost. So I'm being really nitpicky with a lot of this stuff because that's my job, it's what I do. But you also need to keep in mind just how cheap this thing is and it does a remarkable job in that price point. So to wrap this all up, 
it really punches hard for a unit that's so cheap. There's a lot that's great in here. If you want a unit that's easy to interface with via your smartphone, a huge battery life, a nice screen, and basic navigation that's sort of good enough, this is quite a solid unit overall. And again, $220. Really high performance riders and people with a lot of expectations of their units. It's a little bit uneven. There's a few things that need to be tweaked or changed before I would really recommend it to the nerds. Just be aware of its limitations and go in knowing what it is that you're actually getting. And I think you, there will be a lot of happy buyers of the Rider 420. So that's where I'm gonna leave it guys. I've got a written review over on La Vella Cheetah if you want to read more. Thank you so much for joining me as always. Don't forget to like, subscribe and all that stuff and I will see you next time.